Welcome to the University of Kentucky Surgical Skills Lab. This video will introduce the concept of holding a needle driver, the parts of a needle, what a suture consists of, and how to throw a simple stitch with instrument tying. First thing we're going to talk about is the parts of a needle. A needle driver. Needle driver has holes. You'll hear a lot of people telling you you have to palm a needle driver, okay? I rarely palm a needle driver, but sometimes you do, but you don't, it's really hard to palm a needle driver, meaning not use the holes to hold the needle driver when you start. So I always say you start with putting the thumb in, in one of the holes, and the second hole gets a finger that is comfortable for you to hold the needle driver, open and close it, but don't make it your index finger, because your index finger is used for control. Now for my hand, it's a little bigger, so I use my ring finger and my thumb, and then I just can learn how to open and close the needle driver. Suture is defined as two main attributes. One is whether or not the suture is braided or monofilament. And the other attribute is whether it is permanent or absorbable. And those are independent and every suture can be described as braided, permanent, braided, absorbable, or monofilament, absorbable, monofilament, permanent. This is silk suture. It's black. It is a braided suture and it is permanent. So let's look at the suture and let's look at the needle. The needle has a curve on it. There are different size curves, there are different size needle ends, and they correspond to the size and tensile strength of the string attached. The needle has a curve. When you grab a needle, you grab it out at the center of the needle. The curve, that's where it's maximally advantageous to throw your stitch. Most people will grab the needle a little bit beyond it because they always want to get a little more. And they always, instead of putting it straight on, they'll put a little bit of forward, what's called a yaw, to the curve. And that allows you to be able to grab stitching perpendicularly and not have to bend your wrist back too far. This is some artificial skin that is made actually in our lab. And there's a nice defect in it. What we're going to do is we're going to throw a stitch. We're just going to go in, we're going to perp grab the tissue and try and enter perpendicularly and engage the tissue that you want to close before turning the needle. Come out, grab, try and learn, you know, over time you'll learn how to grab the needle where the next time you throw it's already where you need it to be before you throw your next stitch. And then we're going to pick up the tissue. Don't pick up the tissue where you want the needle to go because then it's in your way. Pick a little next to it, granted, and throw the needle. Now you've thrown a simple stitch. Now you have to tie the stitch. So you're going to pull the string through, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just do a simple instrument tie. Now instrument tie means that you're going to use your instrument to throw your knots. You can see it on the screen. We're going to pull the string through. It's a long stitch. You just want to leave enough to throw. So now you're going to see it make a loop. Put your instrument in a loop. Turn once. Turn twice. Open your instrument. Grab. And then cross your hand. and throw it down. Now since you threw it twice it'll stay. Now you bring your loop and you bring your instrument around the back backwards, make one loop, grab, and pull it through down. That's two. Each type of suture defines how many knots it needs. The least number of knots is three. That's three. In silk is okay with three. As you're learning and you're learning how to tie knots, I always suggest put a couple more in. A, it's good practice, and B, if someone cuts your knots for you, chances are they may cut a knot or two out, and so you're not still good.